Welcome to the first session of five in our series looking at the Catechism of the Church of England. These can be watched in conjunction with the Catechism service video or on their own. Links to all the videos and those on the 39 articles and the Book of Common Prayer can be found in the description below this video. We start with a reading from Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 14. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will cer certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body, ruled by sin, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. So welcome to this first session on the Catechism. We start with an introduction to the Catechism uh, and then we'll start looking at the Catechism itself. The Book of Common Prayer contains a Catechism, that is to say an instruction to be learned of every person before he be brought to be confirmed by the Bishop. And the BCP Confirmation Service says, none hereafter shall be confirmed, but such as can say the Creed, the Lord's Prayer and the Ten Commandments, and can also answer to such other questions as in the short catechism are contained. The Book of Common Prayer also gives the following requirement. The curate, that is the vicar, of every parish shall diligently upon Sundays and holy days after the second lesson at evening prayer, openly in the church, instruct and examine so many children of his parish sent unto him, as he shall think convenient, in some part of this catechism. And all fathers, mothers, masters and dames shall cause their children, servants and apprentices, which have not learned their catechism, to come to the church at the time appointed, and obediently to hear and be ordered by the curate, until such time as they have learnt all that is here appointed for them to learn. Unfortunately, we don't uh, usually have evening prayer on Sundays in church for me to be able to do this. And in any case, I've had no complaints from parents or employers that I'm not there to instruct their children or employees. But the force behind this idea of catechism of these requirements is a biblical one. In Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 19 it says teach the words of the Lord to your children talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up but before we start looking at what should be taught let's define a few terms the catechism is a summary of belief usually for the purposes of teaching those who are new to the faith and they're often done in a question and answer format. 
The word catechism is from the Greek word katecheo, meaning to instruct, and therefore we get the word catechesis. And this is uh, from early on in church history. The catechumenate was a period of instruction lasting for up to three years for those wishing to become Christians. And these people were known as catechumens. And this period was leading up to their baptism at Easter. This system of instructing new Christians in the faith through a catechism uh, leading up to their baptism gradually waned as the Western culture became nominally Christian. But it had a sort of revival around the time of the Reformation. It then waned again, but there has been a recent revival in interest in catechisms due to a recognition that there is often a lack of teaching about doctrine in the churches, no matter how good they are at explaining uh, and interpreting the Bible. So over the coming sessions, we'll be looking at the catechism in four parts. This first session, we're looking at uh, the introduction to the catechism and uh, the first session beginning with Christ. The next session will be entitled Believing in Christ and we'll look at the Apostles' Creed. The third session is entitled Becoming Like Christ and we'll be looking at the Ten Commandments. The next session, session four, will be Belonging to Christ. We'll look at the Lord's Prayer and then session five uh, is also Belonging to Christ and we'll look at the Sacraments. The resources that we're going to use for our sessions uh, are as follows. We're going to be looking at the Catechism from the English Prayer Book. Um, there is the Catechism in the Book of Common Prayer, but the English Prayer Book is a version of the Book of Common Prayer Catechism, but it's just in modern English. We're also going to be drawing on the resources Walk This Way by Church Society uh, from their blog posts in 2020 and also the book of that title, which contains line-by-line line reflections on the Creed, the Ten Commandments, and the Lord's Prayer. And then finally, we'll also be referencing uh, a new catechism entitled To Be a Christian, and this is an Anglican catechism from the Anglican Church of North America, again from 2020. Uh, this is a more in-depth catechism with questions and answers on each line of the Creed, the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer and links to all of those resources can be found in the description below this video. So let's look at the first section of our Catechism entitled Beginning with Christ and these four divisions of the Catechism are taken from the Anglican Church of North America's Catechism. So question one, what is your name? The answer, my name is, insert name here. Question two, who gave you this name? Answer, my parents and godparents at my baptism. Through baptism, I was made a member of Christ, a, the child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. Question three, what did your parents and godparents do on your behalf at your baptism? Answer, they affirm their allegiance to Christ, their rejection of all that is evil, and their resolve to fight against evil and to follow Christ. They affirmed all this in my name, as well as their own. Question 4. What does following Christ involve? Answer. It involves three things. First, renouncing the devil and all his works, the empty show and false values of the world, and the sinful desires of the flesh. Secondly, believing all that the Bible teaches about the articles of the Christian faith. And thirdly, keeping God's holy will and commandments all the days of my life. Question five. Do you think yourself bound to do these things? Answer. Most certainly. With the Lord as my helper. I heartily thank God, our Heavenly Father, that he has called me to the state of salvation through Jesus Christ our Saviour. And I pray that he will give me his grace to continue in this state to the end of my life. 
when giving a summary of our faith, we have a choice to make about where we start. Our catechism starts with our baptism, and we'll think more about baptism itself later on. The Anglican Church of North America catechism starts with describing the human condition of sin, then the good news of salvation through Jesus' death, and our need to repent and put our faith in Jesus. This is perhaps more appropriate for a post-Christian society which needs to hear that message. The first question asks our name. At the time of the Book of Common Prayer, baptism was the legal naming ceremony, and this made a clear link that our identity is bound up with God. Baptism is no longer a legal naming ceremony, but the idea of God calling us by name, see for example in the confirmation service where it's clearly stated, God has called you by name. But the idea of God calling us by name is still important. He is a personal God who is interested in us as individuals. Starting with our baptism, the Catechism puts the emphasis on what is done to us. We are passive. This is important to remember, as when we start with the Gospel, that is, our need to repent, we can turn salvation into something we achieve or earn through faith. By saying, through baptism I was made, we affirm that God reaches down to us. We do not reach up to him. Thus the emphasis is on his grace and his primary movement. So in our baptism, we are made a member of Christ, the child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. But this is not magic. We are not automatically saved if baptised, because the promises made are continual. They are about allegiance, rejection and resolve to fight and to follow. We are made a child of God in our baptism, but as a child of God we are to follow Christ and all that involves. And we see what it involves in question four. And these things are going to be explained in the rest of the Catechism. And a major part of the baptism service is that the parents and godparents have a duty to teach the child the promises made on their behalf and to teach them the faith, hence the instructions for catechism after baptism. The baptism promises are made for us, but are ours too, and therefore we are bound to keep them. But even after reminding ourselves what we have to do to follow Christ, we go back to thanksgiving for his grace in calling us to salvation and asking him for help to continue to do this. So some questions for reflection. Question one. What are the benefits of recalling the graces that are ours by baptism? Question two. Following Christ is hard. How might we do it with the Lord as my helper? And question three. If we are parents or godparents, how well are we fulfilling our duty to catechise our children or godchildren?